<laughs> what's up, what's up, what's up, everybody? How you guys doing? My name is Steph. This is... Lorenzo. And uh, we are here to lead your midweek Bible study devotional series. Sorry for a little technical glitch there. That was all my fault. So let's just rewind. Let's try this one more time. <laughs> Welcome to the midweek Bible study devotional. Uh, we are here to lead here at West End Worship Center to all family, friends, West End youth members. Good to see you. Pastor Zoe. It's always good to see you. And I'm sure for you, it's good to hear us. Uh, <laughs> Sorry about the technical glitches, but that's how it's been throughout this whole year now where we've been doing uh, live stream broadcasts. And as usual, whether you are live or whether you're viewing this after the fact, we are very grateful that you're taking time out of your busy Wednesday evening schedules to kind of just lay back and, and, and hear us out. And we appreciate the feedback that we've been getting uh, on these series and, and what we try to do for you our viewers, whether you are a regular member, regular visitor, or a first timer, uh, it's great to have you here. And of course, we are uh, talking, we are in the midst of our God is series, and uh, Bishop Morrison uh, did a great job talking about a topic that, uh, it, it could get juicy here tonight, Steph, it really could, because we could really exhaust this topic about the sovereignty of God. Yeah, yeah. And even the most uh, staunchest, uh, longest tenure of believer sometimes has difficulty grasping the sovereignty of God and exactly what that entails in our day-to-day -day lives. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, sovereignty is a big, deep theological word, big, huge mm -hmm. uh, Bible word. And um, sovereignty, like uh, when we say that God is sovereign, it actually means like he's all-powerful and he's in control. Um, and everything that is happening, everything is, is, that is existing is in his will. And so the reason why, like you mentioned, it's uh, very deep and even the staunchest of, of anybody can wants to wrestle against that. Um, you look at the problem of evil. You look at the problem of sin. You look at the problem of discomfort. And you say, well, if God is in control, then this should not exist. But in the sovereignty of God, in, in the overall plan of God, uh, God actually is in control. That's and that's right. a hard thing for most people to, to grasp, uh, especially if uh, you're out there and you're, um, you're a perfectionist. Um, you, you, you detail your minute by minutes, your hour by hour, day to day. Um, you, you're the one who goes on vacation and literally has a, a spreadsheet of what you're doing uh, every single day. And, and so for you, you like to be in control. Um, and if you are a person who likes to be in control, you're possibly also a person who is quite frustrated because you're constantly trying to put things in line. Uh, meanwhile, at the end of the day, you actually don't have the authority to keep things in control. Now, it's good to be in control. Like now, we're not knocking that, especially if you have the spiritual gift of uh, administration. Uh, if you do, please give me a call because I got a few things that are happening over here at West End yeah, that can really use your gift, your spiritual gift of administration. Um, but uh, when <laughs> individuals who try to control life to their extent, they're missing out on the picture of the sovereignty of God. That's right. And not only your day to day, you know, God bless you, those of you have your organizers or whatnot, or you do everything. If you're like Pastor Steph, everything's on your phone digitally. Um, <laughs> you know, ask Siri. <laughs> Um, e even beyond your day to day, there, there are many of you, you know, hey, I want to go to university at 18, I want to graduate at 22, I want to do graduate school and finish graduate school at 26, 27. Mm -hmm. uh, I better have my spouse at age 30, my uh, <laughs> <You're gracious>. job <laughs> at 31, my house at 32, kids by 34, 35, 36. Plan all of that. I, I, I mean, ideally, we would like to be able to do that, but the, the reality is. Uh, we aren't, even the best of us uh, as planners, we may be good at putting things in order, but we cannot predict the future. Uh, nor can we see things that uh, could happen to us that can kind of derail uh, a lot of our details and our plans, not just for our day to day, for our lives, but uh, the sovereignty of God, Him having the authority uh, to do what He wants to do and what that entails for us. You know, and, and we're going to go kind of deep into it and we, as usual we invite your comments and your questions uh, but what does that entail uh, god is in control and when we worship god we make the decision uh, to, to serve god and follow jesus christ many of us envision a, a great life and and for those who are maybe young in the faith or who do not yet know christ feel that you know once i i, I serve god everything should be peachy clean right easy peasy yeah. <laughs> uh, but with the sovereignty of god uh, it, it doesn't, it, you know, God's sovereignty and his authority doesn't guarantee you uh, a life free of, of challenges uh, or pitfalls. Uh, but what it does 
it, 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 it gives it should give you the assurance excuse me that uh, the one who called you is in control mm -hmm. uh, he has the best made plans for your life and uh, believing in God by default should also entail that you accepting his sovereignty and accepting the fact that you know he has a higher plan uh, a greater cause yes yes and I think that um, like you mentioning just the list of what I am going to experience these these markers these milestones and uh, I find that many people are frustrated with not only God but their faith in that time mm -hmm. um, maybe because they're brought up under uh, unclear theolo theological teaching yes, or that would be bad <laughs> theological bad teaching theology. um, because uh, you know you know just Pray to God, and God will bring this through. And if you need anything, you need name to it. speak it. these things name into existence, which is what Christians aren't supposed to do. Believe and receive <laughs> it. Name it um, and claim it. Uh, but uh, when when you have something that you want and you desire, uh, and you feel that you're going to do anything that you can to try and grasp it, and when you find that you're limited, and you look at your mortality, and you're like, I actually don't have the control to, now, because of this poor teaching or this poor theology, uh, I'm being taught that, you know, you know, I can almost bully God into granting my wish, almost like God is a genie and not the Lord Yahweh, God Almighty. And so when we have this mindset of like, I'm going to uh, seek God to give me this because this is something I want, uh, this is where we lose the mindset of understanding that God's sovereign. Um, when we come to God for things, and we talked about prayer uh, a couple of months ago back in, in January, uh, prayer is consulting God, God who is sovereign, right. and asking him, asking him for permission, asking him what his will is, and actually asking us to, uh, asking him to align us with his will. Because sovereignty, like we said, like the, you know, a clear cut definition is that he is all powerful, he is all authority, and he is in control. That's right. And so if I am worshiping this God, I need to come to him in that attribute. That's right. Uh, very humble and meek in our yes. approach to God. And we were talking about it before we went on live. That Yeah, uh, bad theology, uh, just a misconception of who God is. Uh, a lot of, of too many people uh, have this idea that, you know what, I'm going to kind of roll with God. I'm going to put him along with my plans. So God, you're going to help me get to where I need to go. You know, and, and that's not you know, <laughs> that's not how it works. And, and many have fallen uh, victim to that kind of believing that, you know, God is, you know, he, he comes in handy. He kind of helps me get to where I want to go. And, and when we talk about the sovereignty of God, the authority of God, that him being in command, uh, the Bible doesn't uh, d disclose to us or declare to us that some some form of being or existence gave him that delegated authority. It, God is sovereign. Yes, that, yes. And, and that's what it is. Yes. Uh, not like us, whatever positions we may have here on earth, you know, I, I, we have minister's licenses that allows us to do certain things. Um, you know, I, I, I'm a, a, a peace officer. I'm a, I'm a senior manager that will allow me to do certain things. Uh, but, uh, you know, carrying a badge and such, but no. Uh, that was given to me by man. That uh, was delegated. That was delegated. <laughs> and you know what? It could be taken away. Yes. I can lose it. Yes. Do a right? f about four wrong decisions in a row. Uh -oh. and, and all those are gone. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. You know, even in, in my uh, administer functions as a minister, do reporting. If, if I'm not reporting monthly, I can lose my, my license. Mm -hmm. So uh, what God has cannot be taken from him. Mm -hmm. uh, we may not believe in him. Uh, we may scoff at him, we may mock him, you may have uh, unbelieving family or friends, atheist family and friends, but that does not detract mm -hmm. from the authority that God has been given. No political uh, person here on earth, no movement mm -hmm. uh, against God, uh, nothing could ever challenge God's sovereignty. That's what he has, and, and it can't be relinquished. Yeah, so um, just going into the first passage here today, uh, in the book of Psalm. Uh, Psalm, for those who know, is a, a book of Hebrew poetry. Uh, it is... Uh, essentially think of it like a hymn book song book uh, what we would know in our you know in our mindset and um especially when the people of god used to travel uh to worship the lord when they used to travel to to That's celebrate right. the things of god they would sing you know these these hymns and these songs and here in psalm 115 verse 3 this is a lyric from one of the poems one of the songs that they would recite over and over again our god is in the heavens he does all that he pleases amen so yeah. if there is a, a specific situation that you are in, or if there is a specific outturn that has happened, just know that God does all that he pleases. That's right. And, that's right. And, and so that's a picture of the, the attribute 
and a picture of who God is and his his authority as somebody who can do what he pleases. Like, right. um, you know, your uh, uh, father in a household, um, when you walk in, you do what you please. Why? Because you're the head of the household. Now, the other lovely, beautiful, younger members of your family, not so much. <laughs> no. Right? And so uh, it's when not we. Their role. No, it's not their role at all. So, us as people of God, us as human beings, uh, we need to see that picture, that, that aspect of God is that when God comes in, this is this he does how we, what he pleases. That's so right. if I have a prayer request or so I have a specific outcome that I want, uh, guess what's going to pan out? What he pleases. That's not right. what I want and what I will. That's right. That's right. I know you were kind of getting to get into uh, Job a bit later, yeah. uh, so I won't go. I won't touch it too much, Pastor, because you could preach it. But uh, Job forty-two verse two, uh, in the ESV version, says, "I know that you can do all things, and that no purpose of yours can be thwarted." Mm -hmm. And and Job was such a one of the most fascinating stories in all of Scripture, to be honest. And and though Job is kind of located mid Old Testament, uh, Job actually is said to chronologically happen in, in older patriarch, patriarch times yeah. mm -hmm. of the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. And I'm not going to get too much into it because Steph will get into it. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, the whole story of Job is fascinating. And here in, in 42, this is near the end of the book of Job, uh, Job has kind of realized, you know what, uh, his response to God after God kind of scolded him there for, for a few. So, you know, I know you can do all things and the purpose of yours cannot be thwarted. Mm -hmm. Understand that uh, with God's sovereignty uh, comes his providence. And, and we'll kind of touch on that in a couple of minutes. But God can do what he does and he will exercise his plans. And just know that human reasoning, human plans, human logic mm -hmm. uh, cannot be used to contradict what God has preordained for us or what God is capable, mm -hmm. capable of doing. Uh, his ways are always above our ways. His logic defies our, our, our limited human logic. Mm -hmm. And Job was humbled to the point where he finally realized. And, you know, we were talking before going, we're not sure Job fully, fully got everything. But he came to the realization, you know what, Lord, you are in control here. And if never one my friends are telling me that's my fault and this and that and they're questioning this, uh, you are in control. Mm -hmm. and, and your plans are your plans. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, well, I mean, okay, so if you look at the story of Job, uh, for those who don't know, like it's a 40-something, 50-something mm -hmm. chapters uh, of just like life like you know and so here we have a man a <laughs> yeah life <laughs> and, and so we here we have a man who is you know living a life of righteousness um from my studies i don't see that he's a hebrew i may be corrected if uh if you know him as a hebrew like let me know because i'd love to to read put it in the it. chat yeah yeah put in the chat let's talk um <laughs> there are people who have who are a lot more smarter a lot smarter than i am uh anyway so we don't see him as like being a hebrew but we see him as uh somebody who's following uh you know the the, the things of god and uh so he has children he has a wife um he's he's wealthy because he has you know flock and herd he has land so uh you would kind of picture him as like a businessman mm. who owns multiple businesses um he has a loving family um he loves god he, he offers sacrifices to god uh, the bible says that he even got to a point where he offered sacrifices for his children just in case That's his right. children himself That's were getting right. themselves in trouble so this is this is the guy who's doing things um, uh, all the way to the, the nth degree. Like, That's this right. is the good, godly, bow tie wearing, tax paying, you know, good morning, hallelujah. That's hope you right. like that. That's the type of picture that we see of Job. And um, the Bible even says that there's a hedge of, this is where we get the, the terminology, hedge of protection. Like, you know, God has a hedge around him, like, literally protecting him. And so, in one fell swoop, he loses it all. Um, you know, he uh, he loses his, his herds, he loses his uh, children, his children die, like uh, he loses wealth, and then he loses health. Uh, boils, you know, break out over his skin, and you know, he is in agony. Uh, and the only reason why all those things happen was because the devil himself wanted to ruin his life. The devil himself was like, look at this guy, Job. This guy, Job, is literally worshiping you because you're giving him everything. Like, listen, if you take all that stuff away from you, he's going to turn around and curse you. So God said, okay, all right, how about this? Go ahead and take what you want from him, but his life. His life. <laughs> so, so God had the ability to look at, you know, the Satan, if you want to do a full biblical <laughs> theology, the Satan, and just say, hey, listen here, you can do everything in him, in him but take his life. And so literally in one day, he loses all of his wealth. He loses his children and he loses his health. And he almost lost his mind That's right. um, to the point where his wife was like, Listen, look, look at what happened. Curse God and die. Right. Curse God and right. die. Right. And he says, nope. 
You know, I came into the womb and I will leave. You know, I came to I came out of the womb uh, naked, and naked I shall return. And so he realized that everything that he had was a blessing from God. That's right. And then we see a discourse, and all of that is in chapter one. Then we have forty chapters right. of uh, three different friends that he have, other friends who aren't necessarily godly. Uh, a lot of them, are, the other ones, aren't giving him good advice. Some of them are saying, "Oh, it's because you actually sin. There, there's some sort of sin in your life, and that's why you know things aren't going well." And some people do that. Some people mm-hmm. hear this, hey. You know, your life's kind of rough. You what what yeah. sin are you hiding? You, you, you know, and so there's all of these excuses why Job is going through what he's going through. Yet, because we are the readers, we know exactly what he's going through. God himself, in his sovereignty, was able to spare his life, but allow everything else to be taken away. Mm-hmm. And so later on, I think it's probably around like the 38th chapter. Um, you know, after all of the complaining he has, all of the complaining his friends have, you know, he, he, come, he talks to God. He's like, what? Like, what is this? Like, what is this? And God literally just comes to him and says, see when the stars, when, when they were put in the sky, who put them there? Yeah, where were you? The, where, where were you when the, when the sun came up? Yeah. Where, you see the mountains themselves and they gave birth? Where were you? And literally, one by one, he shows himself as the sovereign God who created the heavens and the earth. And the fact that I control all this. I can do whatever I want. Right. Uh, I like the passage, um, paraphrasing here, but I like the passage when, when uh, God is explaining to, to Job that there is... A leviathan. There's this like beast, this, this huge beast, um, and he goes, this is, "This, this is like my plaything. Like this is this is a pet <laughs> compared to who I am." And so the greatest of the greatest that um, that is here on earth is nothing in compared to God because of His sovereignty. Right. And then we get to verse forty-two, which is where you pulled out. It's like, listen, I control this. I control this. I control this. And, and we you we say this, uh, you know, God can do what He wants, and God. You know, the thing, what just like we talk about grace and mercy going hand in hand, sovereignty and providence go hand in hand. Mm-hmm. And when we talk about the sovereignty of God, we're talking about God's authority, <laughs> that he can do what he wants. That's, <laughs> that's his title, that's his position, that's his space. You know, this, when we talk about the sovereignty of God, he has the right. But when we talk about the providence of God, the providence, we're talking about to do what he wants to do. You know, when we talk about the providence of God, we're talking about God carrying out his perfect plan. Mm-hmm. And, and his perfect plan is always guarded by God's own words, his promises, his own character. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it, God moves with purpose. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm sure many of us know people in, in our lives, in our circle, just don't move with purpose. They kind of just have these aimless schemes and they're not really going towards a function. Mm-hmm. Uh, what the believer and the follower of Christ has to realize, and those of you who may not have made the decision to follow yeah, you, you really have to realize that once you give your heart to God, uh, you are responding to something that God has already started inside of you. Mm-hmm. And as we'll get in a few minutes later, God started this work in you even before the world was created. Mm-hmm. And you are now, in your human response, your, your uh, responsibility is to respond to what God has, has placed in your heart. Mm-hmm. And yeah, he gives us free will to do that. Mm-hmm. And you ha- we have to realize that whatever it is that God allows... Uh, for our lives or for our betterment and and that is what his providence is all about uh, his perfect plan being carried out mm-hmm. in according to what's best for the people that he called in the first place so god is not something who's going to build something in you or start something in you and just kind of leave you to your own devices but the mere fact of your you being created the mere fact uh, of god revealing himself to you in the person of jesus christ mm-hmm. You know, lining up your job and your career and, and other things in your life, other circumstances, uh, all of this was pre planned a long time ago. You know, nothing that's happened to you today or yesterday or may happen to you tomorrow is not going to catch God off guard. Okay. And what Job had to realize and what God was trying to tell Job is listen, this is. Uh, the same person who hung these stars and, <laughs> and divided these waters and did all of these oh, spectacular yes. <laughs> things, uh, the God who looks at this beast, this great Leviathan, that's why people say, you know, dinosaurs are in the Bible. They refer to this scripture in Job that referred to the Leviathan. Uh, this beast is nothing to me. <laughs> He's the same one who says, you know, Job, I got you. You know, if you read on Job right after this in Job, he was restored. Uh, he had... Uh, more, I'm trying to recall yeah. how much more, either double more uh, than what he had previously. Yeah. Even was blessed with uh, a, a new set of children. Yeah. And and he lived something like 140, 150 years more 
uh, after this event of these events of his life that has been recorded in these chapters. So God fully restored Job. He had a plan for Job. And at the beginning, oh, there's so much theology in Job. It, it's really a, <laughs> is a great book. You know, in the beginning, like as Pastor Steph alluded to, right, you know, chapter one, bam, <laughs> boom, 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 boom. There's drama. <laughs> there's drama in chapter one. Yeah. And, and, you know, if you consider the dialogue between the Satan and, and, and God saying, listen, have you considered my servant Job? Mm -hmm. Uh, imagine that. So you imagine God having dialogue about you. Have you considered my servant uh, Lorenzo? You know, there is none across the land like Job. There, there's none like him. You're, you know, God knew what he was doing. And, and quite frankly, Satan did not. Mm -hmm. and, and this is what we have to realize about our adversary, our enemy, that he doesn't have the timeless, infinite mind that God has to mm -hmm. know what's going to happen. If, if Satan knew that he was going to strike out, then he probably wouldn't have tried anything. But... Mm -hmm. Uh, God knew uh, because God is sovereign. He's in control. And again, his providence, uh, his ability to carry out his perfect plan for our benefit, you know, uh, and again, still bound by his character, his nature. God is never going to do something that is in contrary to who he is right, right. or contrary to his words. Right. So uh, as we're talking about that, God not doing anything contrary to who he is or contrary to his words that doesn't necessarily equate to comfort. That's right. That doesn't necessarily... That's to right. us, we would associate, hey, if I'm comfortable, then God is in control. That's right. That's and right. as soon as I'm uncomfortable, hold on a second, God, like, you need to fix this, you need to fix That's this immediately. Right. Hurry up, you don't know what but you're But this is a hard pill for us to swallow as yeah. followers of Christ, to understand that even through the pages of Scripture, That's right. we see individual after individual, um, nation after nation, people group after a people group, who go through the most uncomfortable, strenuous, horrific things, and in all of that, God is still sovereign. That's right. He is still in control. That's right. When the Israelites were held captive and they were slaves for hundreds of years, that's right. God still was in control. in control. That's right. He didn't, you know, just scoop them out as soon as they, you know, they were arrested. When right. Paul the Apostle comes on the scene and he is ministering for the things of God and Rome doesn't like that. And Rome, you know, whips him and flogs him. God is in control. When Rome decides, yo, we're going to throw this guy in prison, God is in control. When he's in a, on house arrest, God is in control. So sickness, disease, I know that's hard for, for us to understand. I know that there's some very bad theology out there that's saying that, you know, if there's sickness and disease in you, then that means it's not of God and, and you need to just rebuke that. Um, we realize that we're in a broken world and so we're going to deal with sickness and disease. Hello, COVID-19. Like, we're going to deal with this because of we're the brokenness. We're going to deal with death. People yeah. are going to die. Yeah, yeah. So we have to deal with the brokenness. But in the brokenness, we need to cry out to the God who is sovereign over it all. Um, right now, uh, especially right now in the last couple of years, uh, the, the spotlight on, you know, the black community has has heightened, you know. And, you know, a lot of uh, the younger generation is, is pulling back. And, you know, some of them are leaving the church and, uh, you know, arguing because churches aren't preaching about about social justice all they're doing is preaching about the bible and and all this stuff and there's a lot of just focus on you know the oppression uh that people of color have gone through uh not only in the nation of uh united states of america but across the world and you know the trans transatlantic slave trade and all those things uh in the midst of it all god was sovereign that's right and when christ was seized and captured and and crucified, mm -hmm. you know, torturously crucified, mm -hmm. God was still God in control. Right. You know, uh, man, and, and the Easter season is upon us, and, and you know, Good Friday's coming and Sunday's coming. <laughs> you know, it, it, it's fascinating when you just read over the different accounts of the gospel of Christ being taken and him going through the, this, the sham of a trial mm -hmm. and seen before Pilate. You know, and Pilate's kind of, you know, I have the right, I, I have the power. I have the power to release you, you know, and, and he's going before all these people. He's being mocked. He goes before Herod and he just says nothing. And Herod says, I get this, get this imbecile out of here, you know, uh, to think what Christ could have done. Yeah. You know, the song says he could have called 10,000 angels to destroy the world and, and set him free. You know, but yet God was still in control. Yes. And it's a very good point that you make, Pastor Steph. Uh, a lot of us equate uh, God's plan for ourselves with just total comfort. Mm -hmm. And it's it's not so. We're going to get into that a bit later in, in my favorite scripture and all of, of scriptures. <laughs> uh, before that, I, I just want to go back to my point about the fact that, you know, 
God's sovereignty is nothing new. It's nothing revealed to us just as we accept him. Now, his plan has been at work in the timeless mind of God a long time ago. And one of my favorite chapters is Ephesians 1 because it really spells out to the believer that, you know what, hey, all of this, uh, what you are, who you are, all of this started a long time ago. And Ephesians 1 verse 11, the ESV version, this is Paul writing to the church in Ephesus, and he says, In him we have obtained an inheritance, having predestined according to the purpose of him who works all things according to the counsel of his will. You know, so all things, all things, are. this is all ordained by God's divine perfect plan for our lives. Uh, the life that you live, the circumstances that affect who you are, uh, this is not happenstance. This is not, uh, you know, circumstance. It's not just like coincidence that this happens to you. This is all God's, under God's direction. Mm -hmm. Yes, we have free will. Uh, and, and, the, and the mystery between, you know, God's providence and, and free will will always be somewhat of a mystery. We're never going to fully be able to explain the ins and outs of it. Mm -hmm. That's why we are blessed with a measure of faith to accept God, to accept his sovereignty, to accept the providence in that the will for our lives is perfect, that he will uh, cause everything uh, to be in our favor. That is That could be a very difficult thing, especially for the non-believer, to accept the difference between uh, destiny, free will, free choice, you know. And Paul doesn't shy away from that. If you read on in, in Ephesus, if you get a chance to, he explains that, you know what, there is some choice that uh, needs to be made. He did give us free will. He created Adam and Eve with the free will to choose. And, and, and we have that free will. <laughs> However, he governed in accordance to how we should live our lives and choices we should make, but he gave us a free will to choose. Uh, ultimately, God is going to call us and he gives us the will he wants us to lovingly lovingly accept that calling see i would say that like even just a little just a little bit of pushback on that because okay. um for some individuals they believe that free will means like i have my own mind i can make up my own mind and i can you know i can have a will of my own and i can execute a will of my own and that's where i would disagree um that's more of like a, a free liberal choice that's right um because as soon as if that was the case, then God is not sovereign. Right. Because That's then right. that means that God may have a will for me, but I can control it. I think that the concept of free will is under the guise of God's sovereignty. Mm -hmm. So as much as I think that I'm in control, I, I actually aren't. Um, I'm not. I remember this illustration that was given once uh, by a pastor, and he was saying that uh, he was at the mall with a little child. And uh, if you ever been to the mall uh, back in the days, well, I think they still have it now. Um, if you have a little child, there's these little carts that you can rent yep. for like two dollars mm -hmm. for you know their their journey in the mall. And the little carts have like a little steering wheel on it. And he was explaining how his how his boy was like sitting in there, right. and his boy is like like you know turning the wheel and driving, but it was. Really really him the father that That's was right. actually pushing this pushing car. car and so that was a beautiful depiction i was like exactly yes exactly as much as i think that i'm doing this and i'm planning my life and you know i'm gonna do this and whatever god is in the back saying this is you, you know so i'm trying to turn left and god is like ah no we're turning right, right, right. and so that's right. um that's why i would uh, help clarify for most of us who think that hey i got a complete free will and i can do whatever i want if that was the case then this would not be an attribute of god and and the struggle <laughs> great analogy there Pat. <laughs> the struggle that we experience at times in our lives can be when we deal with god's sovereignty it goes back to even Jonah. Jonah is a wonderful example. You know, Jonah, this is what I want you to do. And Jonah kind of says, well, nah, I don't want to do what you asked me to do. You know, I always use the, the, uh, the uh, just kind of make this comparison to those of us who live in the GTA. God told Jonah, hey, I want you to go to uh, Oakville and preached in Oakville about destruction. And Jonah said, nah, I'm actually going to go to Pickering, <laughs> right? And Jonah's on his way to Pickering, and all of a sudden, wow, tragedy happened. <laughs> on the 401. On the 401. <laughs> and, you know, and he kind of gets swallowed up on the 401 for a few days. And while he's swallowed up on the 401, he prays for repentance and repents. And back to Oakville do you go. You know, uh, God's plan is perfect and can't be thwarted by anybody. And part of accepting the sovereignty and the providence of God, even going back to his divine will before the world was created, mm -hmm. you know, when we talk about the providence of God, we should also just take comfort in that. 
You know, the sovereignty of God is not something we should look at with disdain mm -hmm. or, or frustration. I know it can be frustrating at times, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. knowing that the God who called us, the mm -hmm. God who loved us, is in control mm -hmm. and he always has our best interests at heart. Mm -hmm. That should be comforting to us. Mm -hmm. And, you know, comfort, Pastor Zoe, when I'm, I'm struggling, you don't know what I'm going through, this hurts and it's painful, uh, all of that is, is understood. But we have to understand that the God who called you uh, cares for you. Mm -hmm. You can't separate God's sovereignty from his love from us. Mm -hmm. You can't separate his providence, his ability to carry out his plan separate from his love. His love is the over underlying factor behind all of what he does. Mm -hmm. Creating us, calling us, restoring us, forgiving us. That is all done under the foundation of love. Mm -hmm. And that's eternal. That's not coming uh, with an expiration date anytime soon. Mm -hmm. So we have to understand that the God who allows all these things to happen to us uh, has a greater plan than what we could see. Believe me when I say these days, I can't even, oh, Saturday I'm going to do this. and No, I, I, I don't know. <laughs> Sometimes I forget what I did completely yesterday. But God's mind, he sees and he knows all things. Yes. And believe me, uh, we, we think about this just for one second. Uh, because at times, uh, family and friends, we act like God doesn't know what he's doing. <laughs> you know, God spoke. He spoke yeah. this world into existence. Yep, yep, yep. Right? He didn't have to go and put in, you know, architectural blueprints or anything like that. Uh, no, he spoke this world into existence. He said, let there be and there was. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, everything that he did, his creative balance, his creative power, is it just shows his authority and his ability uh, just to exercise control over everything. And just as he exercises his authority over creation, uh, he exercises over author his authority over us, his prized creation, mm -hmm. you know, over the ability to make things work in our favor. Mm -hmm. um, I do have one more scripture, but I'll pause there and I'll let Pastor Steph preach no, on man, because... No, man, go ahead, go ahead, man. <laughs> well, I, I was going to say my, my most favorite scripture in all the Bible, you know, after I learned John 3.16, I, I think I pretty much learned Romans 8.28. Okay. And, and of course, this is Paul. Romans 8 is just a masterpiece, by the way. Yes. Romans is a masterpiece, but chapter 8 is kind of like the climax. This is what I heard um, explained. Let me just jump in. This is sure, what I heard no explained. Problem. The, the book of Romans is like a crown. Absolutely. And Romans chapter 8 is the jewel inside the crown. Well, see, that's what I'm telling you. This is why he's a pastor. <laughs> that's well said. No, it's just uh, poetry, man. Just bars. <laughs> <laughs> Romans 8, 8 is the crown of the, of the, of the jewel. Yeah. Uh, of the, the jewel of the crown, excuse yeah. me. <laughs> and, and Paul said, uh, all things work together for the good of them who love the Lord, for those who are called uh, according to his purpose. You know, and for the good. And as pastors have mentioned earlier, we equate good to comfort, comfort, mm -hmm. comfort, comfort. And no, uh, and I spoke about this, uh, I believe, last summer. Uh, the good that God uh, talks about, that Paul talks about, is the conformity to Christ. Mm -hmm. That is the good. Mm -hmm. uh, everything that uh, we experience in this life, everything that God allows to affect us in this life, and good and the bad, the comfortable and the uncomfortable, is all for our the purpose of us to conform into the image and likeness mm -hmm. of Christ. You know, we used to sing this song. We don't sing this song anymore. You know, to be like Jesus, to be like Jesus, all I ask is to be like him. Mm -hmm. You know, that is the purpose uh, of, of our Christian walk. And I've said this a trillion times. Uh, the purpose of us being a believer is to be like Christ. That is the goal of every believer. And, and it's just fascinating to think. I, I always say it's my favorite scripture just to know that everything that happens to me as a believer as a follower of Christ, mm -hmm. uh, it's for the purpose of me conforming more like Christ. Listen, if there's one thing you're going to be in this world, it, it's not going to be a CEO, it's not going to be an executive, it's not going to be a politician, it's not going to be a lawyer, doctor. All of these things are great things. <laughs> Absolutely. A prize athlete, all of these things are wonderful aspirations to have. Go for them. Mm -hmm. Class valedictorian, professor, go for it. However, uh, the crown jewel of your life is becoming more and more like mm -hmm. Christ each mm -hmm. and every day. Mm -hmm. Why? Because that has eternal value. Um, there are a lot of doctors, lawyers, and CEOs out there who won't necessarily uh, make it to heaven because they have not accepted Christ 
Uh, they have no desire or ability to become like Christ. Mm -hmm. Uh, but those of us who uh, allow the sovereign God in his providence <laughs> to allow things to happen into our lives, we need to realize, as Paul points out in Romans 8, 28, mm -hmm. that um, everything, everything weaves together, uh, the good and the bad, and the good meaning for us to just really conform into the image of Christ at the end of the day, mm -hmm. to be like him, reflect his character, uh, to reflect the fruit uh, of the Spirit, uh, all of these things happen to us so that we can become more like Christ. Mm -hmm. So as we're in this uh, devotional, as we are in this series and we're looking at the attributes of God and we're starting to unpack some of these characteristics that like, clearly depict um, the, the character of the God that we serve, mm -hmm. um, the more and more that we learn about him and his characters, the more and more that we grow in the knowledge and faith and grace, the grace, uh, grace of, uh, of God. Um, but in the midst of that, we, we need to experience God in these attributes. And so one way that I can say that we are uh, a way that we can experience this is a little bit of a difficult application here. And so uh, I'm going to pull up um, the book of Proverbs, the wise book of Proverbs mm. with uh, the many truisms of the faith. Uh, and in Proverbs chapter uh, 19, verse 21, it says, Many are the plans in the mind of a man, but it is the purpose of the Lord that will stand. That's right. And so what this wise truism is actually painting is that I got plans. You got plans. You got plans. All of us have plans. That's Guess right. what? Um, March... The first, 2020, a lot of people had a lot of plans. <laughs> travel travel plans. And a lot of people had travel, travel plans. plans. A lot of people were planning to get married. A lot of people That's were right. planning to, yeah. you know, just right. uh, to start that new business at that new restaurant. Like, I really feel sorry for the, the yeah. restaurant. But the people yeah. who just opened the restaurant yes. in March 2020. Yes. But even though these plans were put into place, and even though you did everything, you read the books, you took the course, you know, you, you watched the YouTube, you got counsel, you invested, you, you prayed, you fasted. And all those things were your plans, but it is the Lord's purpose that's going to stand. That's right. And so this um, this doesn't mean that hey, we just you know be free spirits and just throw out our daily that's planner right. that's and right. um, no. you know take our watch off and throw it out and just like walk around like a vagabond. No, what this no. does mean <laughs> is that it, it is good for us to plan, but we need to understand that our planning is again under the guise of the sovereignty of God. The same illustration. The little kid who's driving the little cart thinking, yeah, look at me, I'm driving in the mall. Look at, I'm going to turn left and turn right. And my, you know, my shoulders are wagging, you know, back and forth. Meanwhile, it is the loving father who's actually taking this child to the proper destination. That's right. And so it's good for us to plan. Um, and I believe in Holy Spirit planning. One of my uh, mentors way back in the days, uh, you know, taught me uh, that, that the Holy Spirit is involved in planning and Holy Spirit planning, which means uh, that you can plan, you you can plan out your day like you're in control, uh, but you live out your day as if God's in control. So if uh, something comes um, that God, uh, you know, comes in and, and, and he wants you to override a specific plan, well, you just throw your planner out the way and you focus on what God has. But at the end of the day, you've been given a responsibility. And that's why the, the picture of like free will versus sovereignty, um, you know, has to be bled into responsibility. Uh, God's given us um, you know, he's giving you a job. He's giving That's you right. a job. He's giving you a task. He's giving you a great commission. He has given you gifts and talents. Now it's your responsibility to manage and steward that. But we're all doing it underneath the sovereignty of God. Oh, preach on, preach on, Pastor Step. It, <laughs> it, it really is as simple as well. It's not simple at, at times to accept, but we just really have to accept uh, God's uh, perfect will, His character, and He wants what's best for us. You know, he wants what's best for us. We have to realize, uh, family and friends, you know, when we, before I get into that, do it, do it, you know, some advice or hints or whatever, uh, tips, I should say. Mm -hmm. uh, for me, and I, maybe some of you at home do this, mm -hmm. um, I pray, you know, Lord, if this is not what you want, just throw it, <laughs> remove it, take it away, crash it, burn it, do whatever you need to do. You know, I got into the habit of doing that, like, in my early 20s, you know, because I just didn't want to waste time, and I'm I'm no longer in my early twenties. <laughs> Those days are long gone. Um, but I don't want to waste time going forward. You know what I mean? And it's a painful process uh, when you are kind of wrestling with God, fighting with God, mm -hmm. going especially, especially 
Let me get close into the camera. Oh, oh. Especially those of you who know that, and, and you're out there. I know you are. Those of you who know uh, that God has something for you to do and you, mm. and you are playing around mm. and you don't want to do it. Those are not comfortable times for you. Jonah chapter 1, 2, 3, and 4. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Please, I encourage you. To accept what God has in store for you, knowing that it's for your best. Because mm -hmm. again, as Steph just alluded to very quickly, <laughs> the book of Jonah tells us that, you know what, you really are wasting time. When God has ordained something for you to do and commissioned something for you to mm -hmm. do, you trying to avoid it or run away from it or thwart it with your own plans mm -hmm. becomes a very frustrating time for you. Mm -hmm. You know, Jonah was on a boat going the opposite direction and the boat was in chaos and through the Old Testament, you know, practice of casting lots, they figured that, okay, Jonah, it's you. And Jonah would say, yeah, it's me. You got me. You know, throw me off the boat. <laughs> and they did. And the boat was, was saved. But Jonah ended up, you know, swallowed up. Mm -hmm. And so uh, just know this in 2021, guys. Uh, let's learn from Jonah. Let's learn from Job and, and really accept what God has in store for us, knowing that we could take comfort in that plan. Mm -hmm. Guys, uh, if something, if you're wrestling with a decision, uh, give it to God. God knows your heart. Pray it out. Lord, if this is not, if I, I'm at crossroads with decisions, if this is not for me, then I'm asking you to remove it from me or show me clearly that this is not for me. Yes, yes. Uh, this is who God is. Mm -hmm. And he'll reveal that to you. That's the God that we serve. Mm -hmm. You know, understand this about God and his sovereignty, that this is a complete plan. Uh, you know, the right of Hebrews, when another one of my favorite scriptures says, Jesus Christ is same yesterday, today, and, and forever. And, and that's God is. You know, uh, that's Christ from the beginning. The Bible says all things were created for him, by him, through him, uh, for him. I hope I quoted that right. Uh, and and, and, and here, here is, yes. And here is the uh, God who has started the work in us uh, before creation as alluded to in Ephesians 1. Uh, here is God who continues work in your heart of, of conversion today and continues to sanctify you daily to help set you apart from your desire to sin. And God's working for you in your future. Uh, Jesus went away to prepare a place for us and, and our, our bodies will be converted into Christ's bodies. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, the process of glorification won't happen yet until we die, until we pass away. So again, we, we have to die, we have to pass away, and we'll be converted into Christ's body. So here, the sovereignty of God at work through every area of our lives, mm -hmm. the, the providence of God working His will uh, throughout every stage from before creation to current day to our future. Um, we can't... Uh, Think about this, church family and friends. What would we do if we didn't have hope in Christ? I, I don't know about you, but I'm so grateful for God in my life. Amidst my failures and mistakes, I am so grateful for a God who works things out for the good of, 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 of us who, who, who know him, uh, uh, you know, according to his purpose, not my purpose. You know, I can't leave things up to hope. You know what I mean? And I don't picture myself ever trying to scratch a lottery card and... and and a one in a, a, a gazillion chance of winning money. Mm -hmm. You know, I, 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 this may not be correct odds, but, you know, the chance of God blessing me is one in one. Uh, <laughs> my The chance of me winning... That's a bar. Power bar. <laughs> or pow, power bar? Power not power bar. Power ball. You're such a good me. Christian. Look at you. Uh, <laughs> power bar is a food. Power ball. <laughs> me driving to Niagara Falls, New York. Uh, well, I can't do that now anyway. To win Powerball, 300 million, 500 million, whatever, that's one in a gazillion. Mm -hmm. You know, but God will bless me one of the one times all the time. Mm -hmm. You know, that's the sovereignty of God. That is the providence of mm -hmm. God. Mm -hmm. So, uh, as we wrap up today, because it's a very uh, good conversation that we can have, again, this is a devotional, a Bible study devotional, where we unpack the biblical truths, we go a little mm -hmm. bit deeper, um, and I uh, want to turn it to a devotional for you. Like, um, it's one thing to watch live streams, it's one thing to watch sermons, it's another thing to apply that to your life. Life. Ask yourself this question. What does your prayer life look like underneath the understanding that God is sovereign? Um, uh, how is your prayer life submitting to the sovereignty of God? How is your daily schedule submitting to the sovereignty of God? How is you um, living a life as a student? How is living a life as a parent? How is your life living like a husband or a wife or you know a tax payer, a, a business owner? How are you doing these things underneath? 
the attribute of God as sovereign? And where in your life do you need to make adjustments? Mm. Wow. <laughs> that's, that's, that's really good. Think about decisions that you need to make or decisions that you have made. Mm -hmm. You're at a crossroads. You, you have option one, option two, option three. Or maybe you're just still really down on the loss of a loved one uh, or, or something that didn't come to fruition that you thought that you've worked hard for. You know, again, some of you are kind of beating your heads over one thing mm -hmm. and maybe you're mistaking it. Uh, you know, you it's so hard at times to really get straight theology and you're trying to combine different aspects of praying and being consistent in our prayers and steadfast and not realizing that God has told you no a few times yet you're still pressing <laughs> yeah. on. Uh, I mean, it, it can be frustrating. But as Steph kind of alluded to, how does the sovereignty of God play a role in your prayer life? Mm -hmm. Saying, Lord, please put myself in alignment mm -hmm. with your will and with your way. One of the most fascinating scriptures in all of scriptures is, you know, delight yourself uh, in the Lord and, and he will give you the desires of your heart. And there's a condition, of course. We all just, oh, he'll give us the desires of my heart. No, no. <laughs> delight yourself. Take pleasure. <laughs> In the Lord mm -hmm. take pleasure in his priority for your life mm -hmm. realize that when you accepted Christ into your life that he kind of realigned your your priorities mm -hmm. kind of rejig the way you think about life uh, the way you think about things prior is not the way you think about things before what you've mm -hmm. prioritized prior uh, are no longer prioritized uh, now that you're a believer mm -hmm. he's rearranged those things so as you delight yourself in God's path and God's way uh, what happens is then your desire is in alignment with what he has in store for you. Mm -hmm. So by default, it will become the desire of your heart mm -hmm. because you have changed your alignment and your desires to yes. suit what God wants for you, what he has wanted for you, what he knows what's be what he knows is best for you mm -hmm. even before you were born. Yes. Um, so again, in just in closing, just uh, want to encourage, especially those who are out there watching that are actually going through tumultuous times, that are actually going through mm. frustrating, hurtful times. You you have a bad past. You 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 know you, you feel like you're always you know behind the eight ball. You feel like you take two steps forward and ten steps back. Mm. Um, I would encourage you, uh, number one, um, uh, to to take those times and allow them to draw you closer to God. But then also number two. Is to know that he's sovereign he's in control so when you are not in control because you're not in control i'm not in control we're not in control uh as much as you're trying to you know grasp the air and control it you you can't just know that god can amen um and that's the one that you submit to amen so amen. uh let us go with that let us uh, stay encouraged as we continue to learn more and more about god and his attributes Mm -hmm. uh, how about we quickly close uh, off this time together in prayer? Amen. Uh, Father God, just thank yes, you, Lord, God. for thank revealing you. yourself once again thank to you, us uh, through your word, through creation, uh, through your God. body. Thank you and for we ask you, Lord, us. that you would you for uh, reign supreme control. in our lives and you would thank show you, yourself Father, strong as the God who is sovereign. As you God, there us. are unanswered prayers thank in you, our eyes, but they actually are answered because you are sovereign. Lord, allow us to be trusting in you. In be led by you, will, guided by you, way. because you're a God and you're great. Way, Continue Father. to uh, care for, for your blessing, people, especially your during this time. Um, let your will be done your in our lives, in the life of your church. In Jesus', in Jesus wonderful name. Bless God. It was wonderful Amen. connecting with you once again on another Wednesday night here at West End Worship Center. Amen. We will, by God's grace, see you again at next Wednesday at 7 p.m. All information regarding West End Worship Center is available on our website, westend.church. Well, until next week, I love you. God bless you. Stay safe. My name is Steph. This is... This is Zoe. Please stay with us the rest of the week. Remember our prayer telephone conference call Saturdays, West Enders, uh, family and friends who are invited likewise on the Zoom. And this Sunday, part two uh, with our bishop. Yeah. Uh, Amen. God is sovereign. All right. God is sovereign. Take care. God bless. God bless.